Hello everybody and good afternoon. My name is Don Arleth and welcome to World Talks where every word matters. After the grueling defeat in the European elections, French President Emmanuel Macron's decision to call snap elections was a big political gamble to say the least. As French elections are getting closer, it seems doubtful whether Macron's bet will pay off. And now joining me to discuss the political tides in France and what that could mean for Poland is former Polish ambassador to France, Tomasz Orłowski. Hello and thanks very much for joining us today. Hello, good afternoon. Thanks for the invitation. Well, thanks for being here. Now, um, it seems like French voters are shunning the left uh, here. And actually, let's go ahead and take an excerpt. We had a guest um, on, here on TVP World, Euro Creative Managing Director Roman Le Quiu, Quinu, mm -hmm. uh, who said that some polls show a trend among French voters uh, uniting against the far left. So let's take a listen. There is a tendency for this election um, within the French population uh, to mobilize not against the far right this time, but against the far left. It's, it's visible in the numbers and we have to see if it will materialize or not in the election. Basically, the tendency is to say that uh, the national rely as uh, mainstream itself for a number of years and especially since 2022 uh, when they when they had uh, a large number of uh, members of parliament and they tried to soften the language soften the attitude be more professional etc etc and in the same time the far left also obtained a lot of uh, uh, members of parliament and their strategy was completely different it was a strategy of being vocal uh, of being violent in terms of languages uh, to have an attitude that is not very conform to the national assembly for example and to basically really strengthen their communication in an aggressive way so it seems like the french voters are shunning the far left and turning towards the far right do you agree with that assessment unfortunately yes but it is some tendency we are seeing at least since two years. Mm. It is not a new thing. And now with uh, election to the European Parliament, we are seeing how, how uh, close is the risk of, of uh, victory in the, in the snap election of far, of far right. Right. Now, um, if you had to guess, uh, do you think Macron's plan, if he had one, is coming to fruition or is this uh, perhaps a big surprise for him? No, it is, it is obviously something he prepared mm. because he was uh, ready to dissolve at the moment. He, he, he knew the, the first results of, of, of elections to the European Parliament. I am sure and many journalists and many analysts is, is advancing idea that he waited for confirmation of results in the elections for deciding to, to dissolve National Assembly. In some extent, in my opinion, it is not for having a government for the next three years, but thinking about the future presidential elections to be held in three years. Right, right. Well, according to the latest polls, the national rally would take 34% of the vote, mm -hmm. uh, while the Popular Front takes 29%, and Macron's together bloc just take 22%. Yep. Um, surely this, I have, this is a two-part question. Surely this mm -hmm. is disappointing for Macron, or do you not, maybe it's not? It is confirmation of tendons, mm -hmm. confirmation of tendons since a couple of months. It is not something of new. But uh, when you are thinking about so-called uh, so uh, popular front, new popular front, the problem of this, uh, of this uh, left-wing coalition is to have too many leaders. You know, in the far uh, right, you have just one face. Mm -hmm. And it is, it is a part of answer. If even we have quite strong uh, uh, coalition of left four left parties, we have too many leaders. And now it was a question to, to select who will be a candidate, a common candidate to be eventually prime minister if, if uh, left coalition will, will win. Left coalition doesn't have chance, uh, opportunities to win, but perhaps with the uh, Macron movement, perhaps it could be some stable majority. In the, uh, another poll, the Harris poll, uh, tried to forecast the balance of power in the next uh, National Assembly. Mm -hmm. It forecast 235 to 280 seats for, yeah. the, um, for the RN and its allies. 
but that would fall short of the 289 to make an absolute majority. So is that part of Macron's plan? And it is, uh, it what it is a great mean? problem. You know, uh, if, uh, um, if Rassemblement National is not arriving to have to have absolute majority of 200, uh, to, 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 to 289 uh, uh, votes, it's really for the whole year very difficult situation, destabilizing political life in France. Mm. Because president can't dissolve next time during during whole year. And it could be something extremely risky for France. Thinking about the next uh, next budget for 2025, who will vote for? And president is unable to dissolve. Uh, you know, to have to have perspective to France without government, without majority, without budget, it's it could be something of extremely risky for whole Europe. Hmm. Well, that's uh, fascinating, especially when you're talking about budgets. The newly formed Popular Front has made campaign pledge uh, to hike public spending by 100 billion euros next year. Um, some of these promises uh, reduce the retirement age to 60, link salaries to inflation, boost housing and youth benefits, cut income tax and Social Security, and introduce a wealth tax for the rich. Uh, now, obviously, populism seems to be uh, the first thing that pops into my mind when I hear uh, campaign pledges like this. Um, is this appealing? Is this appealing to the, to the French electorate? First, it is a frontal shock with President Macron, because the whole economic line of President Macron was to reduce public spending, was to, to, to reduce um, uh, national debt, of France, who is really extremely high, 113%. It means two times more that that uh, criteria for 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 acceding to euro as single man as single uh, currency. It means the 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 macroeconomic situation of France is quite difficult, and in this situation, to to propose to 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 have a bigger, stronger spending. It is something like suicide. It is nice for, for, for elections, but as you said, right? it is populism, yeah. pure populism. And we have this strong situation when you have two populism on right side and from, from uh, left side. I think now, unfortunately, uh, right side is, uh, I, have, I have feeling that right side is preparing the position of future government and is, uh, let's say, uh, limiting the, the proposals to spend more money. Well, now, uh, in a pivot to Poland, Mr. Ambassador, mm -hmm. since you uh, used to represent Poland in, in, in France, um, what does this mean for Poland if we see, um, say, Marine Le Pen's uh, party take over? And of course, we all want to know what that means for Ukraine. But first, let's concentrate on Poland. Um, well, is this first, good for this kind of re, uh, this revamp in relations that we've seen since the Cold War? Poland, Poland needs strong France, especially in this moment when uh, President Macron is so vocal in the support, supporting Ukraine, in the, in the proposal to send even troops to Ukraine, uh, sending, sending weapons to, to Ukraine, being really uh, without any ambiguity in supporting Ukraine. You remember two years ago at the beginning of conflict, Macron was a little bit hesitating, you know, to not humiliate Russia. Now he changed, he understood. For us, it is a very good position because we have to have strong position of the, of the countries of European Union and NATO who are west, uh, more at west than ourselves as eastern flank. For this reason, to have strong France as ally of, of Poland, it is something who will help us. It is the first thing. The second is to say, I am noting a curious change of line of Rassemblement National concerning Ukraine. They are starting to be more, let's say, supporting Ukraine. First, they're saying they're supporting peace. 
Mm -hmm. It is the official line. But now they are more supporting Ukraine. It means they are changing. In my opinion, it is a change for being able to be accepted as a serious political force able to form next government. Third point is, with the French constitution, the president of the republic have a special powers concerning, concerning foreign relations and, and defense. In this sense, the, the political line, if eventually uh, Madame Le Pen and, and her uh, lieutenant, um, uh, Jordan Bardella, will win, because it is it is idea is Jordan uh, Bardella will become prime minister. In any case, if they will form government, they will be more uh, in the in the context of war in Europe, in the context of of Russian aggression against Ukraine. They will be closer to our position that without a couple of months ago. Right. It is a good change. Okay. Well, that's interesting, um, especially when you look at Marine uh, Le Pen's uh, previous ties yeah, with, with exactly. Putin it's and Putin, the Kremlin. Yeah. And it's Putin and very, very, very clear uh, reactions concerning, concerning support to Russia. Uh, she was, uh, let's say, quite, uh, quite uh, smart because she, she didn't attack directly Ukraine. She, she didn't add her voice to Russian propaganda. But she was, you know, she, she presented line, we need peace as soon as possible. Our position is to, 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 to offer our assistance for all, all uh, talks who will, who will uh, favorize peace. But it is not enough for us in, 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 in current situation. And this change, I don't know if this change is purely conjectural, mm. or it is a change of, of mind. I think it is the, the first one. It is just having idea that they are close to, to the governmental uh, um, uh, responsibilities. She is changing, but in any case, it will be obviously used by President Macron for reinforcing and reconfirming France's uh, uh, support to Ukraine, and it is a good thing. Now, final question. We're just about out of time, so it must be brief. Um, but as far as the Weimar Triangle, we've seen a revamp of this format, and uh, Poland seems to believe in it quite heavily. Uh, what could the uh, victory for Marine Le Pen's uh, party mean for, for this format? We don't know for the we moment. We don't know. Uh, she, she wasn't very, let's say, active in the field of foreign policy. For her, it is not the priority, obviously. But um, when, we are, when we are watching how she's changing position, two years ago, she didn't exclude France will, uh, she will withdraw France from NATO. Now, uh, no matter. Mm -hmm. After she was in favor of withdraw France from Euro, it is not more suitable. You see, she's changing. Obviously, she will be more realistic and she will try to be a statist, like some other populists who becoming a chief of government is playing a role of status. Probably it will be the case. She will not change ideas. She will prepare her, probably, campaign for the presidential elections in three years. But for this period of time, she will play a role or a real status. Right. Well, it's amazing uh, when you um, get closer to power exactly how these views yeah. change. Wisdom we've, seen, is <laughs> we've seen the left move uh, closer to the right, and we've seen the right, what it seems after our discussion, uh, move a little bit closer to the left. Exactly. Well, Mr. Ambassador, Ambassador Tomasz Orłowski, former Polish ambassador to France, thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you. Discussing these matters. Have I a nice it. afternoon. Thank you. And that concludes this edition of World Talks. Thanks for joining me and stay with us for more here on TPP World.